Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, on this one, I'm going to do a review of another consumer based router. This one here is from TP Link and it's their AXE 16000 model. And there's a secondary name called the Archer AXE 300, just so you don't get confused. It is Wi Fi, quad band, and it's 6E Wi Fi which gives you advanced speed capability and a few other nice features that uh, you wouldn't find in six or below that in terms of Wi-Fi standards. In terms of connectivity, this one has quite a selection. If you look over here, you will see a total of four one gig interfaces. These four here in a group, those are one gig local area network interfaces. It also has a 2.5 gig over here and it has a 10 gig on the other side of it. And then all the way to the right is a single port that has two different types of connectors to it, RJ45 or SFP+. But they share the same ports, so you can't connect them both up to that port. But it gives you that option. So with basically two 10 gig interfaces and a 2.5 gig, you could set up just about any network that you want to set up. It does not support VLANs. Well, the average person probably does not need VLANs for a home network, only if you're more of a professional level person who's set up a home office and you have to segregate traffic and there's a lot of devices that are of different types. You would need to really take advantage of that. And I'll be talking about that in a future video, as I've said before. But for purposes of the average large home, single family, or even the double family, this is probably way more than you need. So let me go ahead and uh, talk about the, uh, the other features that it comes with. For example, these antennas can be put in just about any direction. There's eight of them, but generally you're going to put it on a table like this. This is the way you're going to do it straight up, right? Just keep those nice and clear. It has a built-in fan, which is very, very important as I found out. And it has uh, a USB port for hooking up uh, external hard drive. And that could be accessible and controlled security-wise from your local area network or your wide area network, but that's a bit more risky, as I've said in the past. Uh, it also has an assortment of display lights to tell you what's going on at any time, and switches that allow you to turn on things like whether you want Wi-Fi on or off, and you know other features that uh, you may want to have optionally available to you. I do suggest that you go and visit their website. Even though they have a quick installation guide that comes with this router, it doesn't get into any detail. But as you'll see in the links below in the notes to this video, I have a link to this and a link to a full-blown 140-page user manual, which I suggest you download and have available to you just in case you run into a trouble setting up the menus that we're going to be talking about later. In addition to the, this, it comes with what looks like about a, a six-foot Cat7 RJ45 cable. So that'll handle 10 gig. Usually this will be the one you'll use between the router and your, your ISP's router or modem in that case. And if that's what you need, and it's within the you know, distance, this will be a good cable to do. It also has a power supply brick. This one is 12 volts, looks like five amps, and it uses a standard power barrel connector, 2.5 millimeters. And that's pretty much it. That's what you get in the box. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and set this thing up next and see how it works. I'll set up my home router as the ISP, as I've done in the past, which, you know, it should work out just fine. So let's get started. Okay, let's get this thing powered on. I've already got the power adapter plugged in. See the green light? I'm going to connect the power adapter to the plug, which is right over here. For that. And then you see the blue coated RJ45 connector. That's usually how they do it in terms of identifying which one they expect you to start connecting the, the internet to the WAN. So this connection is to the WAN. I'll hook that up. And then at that point, I think all we have to do is power the guy on. And on this side here, there's a power on button. So I'll hit that and we'll see what happens. Whoops, I saw some flashes of light. Let's get this down. What do we got? Well, it's flashing some lights now. It went light blue and then it went this way. It's flashing yellow, which means it's still coming up. Let me check my router. Nothing yet connected. Well, there we go. They've turned solid blue, which means that it is now connected. Let me see if my router shows it. 
And sure enough, it does. It shows that we're connected at 10 gig. So now it's up and running. There's no lights on the side here. So there's nothing I can identify that it's actually on there. It's all these lights at the top. Okay. Let me go ahead now and connect up a PC to it and then power that on. Got a cable here. I'll just connect it up to any one of the, the LAN ports that are here on the side. Just pick one like that. And then I'll power on my PC and we'll see what happens. Okay, let me turn on the PC that's attached to this, which is my test bench. Let's see what we got. I heard the beep. Oh, I see Asus. Oh, Windows 11 tone, I just heard. Good. Let me log into this guy. Okay, we're up. Now let me see what we're connected to. Let me go into, let's see, the command prompt. And I'll type uh, IP config. And there we are, we're connected to the network 192.168.0. It gave us uh, device 144, standard subnet mask, default gateway happens to be the router's IP. So let me open up a browser and go in there and see what it looks like. 192.168.0.1. And there we are. It's asking us for an administrator password, so I will create one. Let me confirm it. And there we go, my time zone. Eastern time, US, Canada, there we go. Select the router port that you've already plugged into your ethernet cable. It's already selected, so that's a default, right? That's why I saw the, the blue background to it. Uh, dynamic IP is what uh, it's doing because I have my internal network acting like the WAN. Router MAC address, I don't need that. Uh, Smart Connect, 2.4 gigahertz, TP-Link. So what do I want to do in terms of the SSID? I'll leave it to that for now. That'll change later, though. That's actually what's specified on the bottom of the router as a default SSID. It's also got dash under 6G for 6G as well. So I'll take all the defaults on this for now. I could do a connection test with my phone, but I really don't want to do that at this point. So I think I'll just leave this alone for now. I did, I did see this on my phone, so I could connect to it if I wanted to, but I'll skip this for now. Auto updates, do I want to turn those on? Right now it's set to not now. I will accept that and take, say next. Update firmware. A new firmware is available. Well, let me update it and see what I get. So it's good to have the latest one. Everything could be done through the smartphone as well. I just chose to do it with direct connection to the router. Okay, success, firmware has updated. Let me see here. It's showing me what everything's set to, the SSID, passwords, everything. Okay, let me do next, a local login. I am now logged in. Oh, one more thing, it wants to have my email. I'm gonna skip that for now. I'm all set, finish it. And now we're up and going. And let's see what I can take a look at real quick. Let me look at the, uh, the internet. What do we got? It shows it's connected to 10 gig. It shows the options for the wireless, 2.4. And we've got six gig also enabled as well. I can enable guest networks if I want for any of those four bands. I will not do so for now. So I think we're all set to go. Let me look at the home shield. Well, I think this is a thing you've got to subscribe to. So I'm not going to, uh, to do that at this point or probably ever. You can actually look at parental controls. You can look at QoS and other features that are available. And it gives you a 30 day free trial of this home shield. I'm not gonna use that right now. Let me try going to the internet, see what I get.
How's that? Okay, so I'm in YouTube on my channel. And there I am, getting close to 12,000 subscribers. Probably another week and I should be there. So I think uh, it's all up and running. I'm not sure if I would make a follow-on video to this. I do suggest that you download the manual that's on the TP-Link website for this. The link is actually down in the notes below this video. Okay, before I close out, I did this final test. I had done it before I installed this new router, and that's on the left-hand side. It's using the speedtest.com, and then I did it after and through this system back to the base network that I had used originally. So I've inserted the, the new router, and lost very, very little. I mean, well within the margin of error on the download speed and uh, same thing for the upload speed. Only a fractional amount that was lost in the network traffic, which is pretty standard. So I think it did very well. So with that, thanks for watching and hope I see you back here again.